Um, these are the main uh, mathematical tools that I, uh, we use to, to obtain this uh, expression from weights to uh, polynomial representation coefficients. We basically take the Taylor expansion of what we showed that was the, uh, the um, output of each of the hidden uh, neur uh, neurons, take the Taylor expansion, and then we take the binomial theorem to expand this term into this other term, and the multinomial theorem to expand this term into this term. What uh, allows us, this allows us to, act, to do is uh, to obtain a combination of uh, coefficients and numbers that we can compute and end with a, an expression that has the input variables uh, multiplied by the weights and, uh, with schematories and uh, to a, a certain expression. Combining all of this and well, setting the Taylor expansion uh, center at zero well, because it makes everything much easier and also truncating the Taylor span, uh, expansion at a given degree Q, uh, we have the final uh, expression that we're paying for the output of the of the neural net. It's uh, well, it's big, but it's just a uh, uh, product and some sort of numbers and the input values. And uh, then having uh, an equation that uh, takes the combinatorial possibilities for each of the uh, input variables, we can separate the, the, that previous formula into each of the coefficients for each of the monomials in the point. Well, implementing this, we can test with simulation, but first uh, we need to, to assess a problem that is when the Taylor expansion is uh, valid for uh, certain activation functions. Mm. Well, we are going to uh, consider some of the most used activation functions, uh, soft plus, the hyperbolic tangent, and the sigmoid. And well, in this uh, plot on the following ones, what we represent in black is the, the, the real activation function. In red, we have the Taylor approximation to a, a, a given order. And in blue, we have the error in, in the approximation. And the vertical uh, dot lines are just representing the uh, interval in which the error is just 0 0.1. It's just uh, to have a measure of where we have a range where the um, approximation is, is kind of accepted. We can observe that uh, the blue lines uh, increase asymptotic asymptotically when we increase the order. So even if we get a more precise uh, interval, in the, uh, if we have outliers, they are going to be more extreme uh, when we use the, this approximation. Well, this is for the soft plus. We can see that the hyperbolic tangent has a bit smaller range of, of acceptability, and the sigma is uh, similar. Here, uh, well, we present some simulations. Uh, first, uh, the simulations are without any restriction in the weight, and these are going to uh, we have uh, are going to arise some problems uh, related with, what, with the validity of the Taylor expansion that we just to say. And then we will see uh, that using some rest restrictions in the weights can allow us to, to solve this, this problem. Well, this is just a scheme of, of the, the simulated data that, that we use to, to test the method. Just uh, we generate uh, data from a normal, uh, create a polynomial with uh, random weights and coefficients at an error term, and then we scale the data. Uh, in this presentation, I'm only using the minus one to one scaling because it uh, presents some properties that allow us later for a better use of the method. But we use for it. And finally, uh, we uh, test the method with different uh, order in the Taylor truncation expansion. Uh, well, this is just uh, to show how some of these examples work. Um, the upper left uh, plot is just how the neural network is producing the, the original uh, variable, just showing that the neural network is probably great. But what we are interested in is uh, the, the right side. We have the prediction obtained with the polynomial regression that we obtained from the weights of the neural network with our method and the prediction of the neural network. 
We can see that in the upper example, that is pretty much exactly the same prediction with the same polynomial regression than from the, the neural network. And this happens because this uh, that line represents the, the, the distribution of the synaptic potentials. That, that means the combina linear combination of weights and input variables that go into each activation function. So we have that they are almost uh, all of them distributed in the, in the interval that has 0 0.1 error in the previous function. Um, but here in the second example, we have that level of state. This is because clearly we have a lot of, a lot of the, uh, distribution of those synaptic potentials appearing in the outside of that acceptable uh, range. Um, to test this, in a lot of cases, we did then perform 500 uh, simulations and compute the mean square error for the different activation functions, different Taylor approximating degree. And we have that uh, this uh, error can go to uh, some acceptable values like that are like 0 0.001 or something less, but we have cases where this asymptotically is closed. Uh, this is uh, just showing what we show in the previous case when we have a bad, bad example. This is what uh, shows us that we need to re uh, have some regularization in the neural network so the method can work. And we can also see here the effect of using a Taylor uh, degree as it is uh, to be in the right side because uh, as we saw that the, the error was asymptotically increasing when, increasing when the Taylor degree was too big. So we have better values, but also uh, worse values. So it has uh, more viability in the error. Uh, well, this is just showing uh, in another example that uh, training a an neural network to uh, predict uh, the function that, uh, with the black uh, points as a training example. And uh, we obtained uh, a polynomial that represents the, the surface surface. And then we extend the range just to see the, the polynomial in a, in a bigger range to, to see the same. Uh, this is uh, done with the same data for different neural networks. And we have uh, the first example here and the second one is here. Uh, this shows that the, the polynomial that we have obtained is quite different for the, uh, the same data. And this one, the original, this is the original polynomial that generates the data. So, um, this shows that we have again that we have to have some regularization that allows us to to have a, a more consistent approach when obtaining this polynomial regression from the neural network weights. And this is the start where we are going to do our uh, To do so, we impose an uh, L1 norm. The weights incident to each uh, unit in the hidden line that is equal to one. This allows us using a, a max one one scaling in the, uh, the original uh, input variables to obtain that the synaptic potentials are also constrained in, in the max one one interval. That uh, it's an interval that um, generates. In the activation functions also the minus one one interval and everything is uh, being uh, constrained to the acceptable range for the Taylor expansion. We can see this here, this summary sample in which the distribution of the synaptic potentials uh, is centered around zero, that is the, the number where we are taking as the center of our Taylor expansion. So as we can see in the right side, the, the key balance in the, in the prediction, the neural network and the generated polynomial regression from the neural network is almost exact. And this doing a simulation now for again 500 cases like before, so that now we don't have those out the outliers with everything below 0 0.0.01 uh, error, and it's, everything is nice. And showing again a, um, a surface generated by a polynomial and trying to, to train it. We have a, this is the original polynomial that generates those points with a small error. And now 
finally, so one neural network, but, but now every neural network is generating a, a polynomial that has a similar, similar set. Um, well, this has uh, some limitations. The main one is that uh, this uh, proposal is limited to a single hidden layer and rotation. So we need to extend it to deeper neural networks and specification networks. Uh, this is future work, but more, <laughs> more realistically, it's uh, present work because we are already working on this. And uh, the theoretical aspect of, about extending it to deeper neural networks is working. It presents a more complicated combinatorial problem to obtain all the combinations for each uh, possible uh, combination of variables in the, for, to generate each monomial in the polynomial. Um, but theoretically, it's uh, already showing prom promising results. The problem is implementing this in an efficient way. And uh, extending it to classification problems is not, not such a problem because it's just, uh, just generating a, a polynomial for each of the output uh, units in the, in, the network, in the network and applying again tailored for each of the activation functions that are used in the units. In the Uh, another limitation is the validity of this method. We see that imposing a regularization uh, works, but it would be nice if we find a way to using it to uh, a general neural network, uh, neural network that's, that is not constrained in the weights. It's important to know that uh, the weights are constrained, but only the weights uh, incident to the hidden layer. And when we extend it to deeper neural networks, that uh, regularization needs to be used only uh, in the weights incident to each of the hidden layers, but the last layer can have any, any magnitude on the, on the weights. And well, we, the simulation study will be standard so for many different sim uh, situations. And also, uh, using it on, on real data because we have used uh, simulated data. But uh, using it on real data can show how this uh, improves interpretability because the main focus here is that polynomial regression has a much better interpretation than uh, neural networks, mainly because that has, it has uh, a lower number of parameters. And also because it has been used in classical statistics for a long time, so it has a much better interpretation. And well, we are also working on implementing this method in an R packets first, then it will come in Python. I don't want to break here a, <laughs> a war between <laughs> different levels. And well, the conclusion is that the, the main contribution is uh, finding this explicit formula that was not present in the in the work uh, that conjectured these, these equivalents. And the possible application where, well, as I say, the interpretability also, it can be used to explore how the, the structure of, a, of neural networks, uh, the chosen number of hidden layers, uh, number of hidden units, etc., uh, affects the, the output of the neural network by uh, translating the properties that we know about polynomial regression. Uh, it can be also used to model uh, uncertainty in some ways. And well, that's all. Uh, thank you very much. And those are the main questions. Yeah. So, a lot of brilliant presentation. I always thought that uh, in order to work really complex equations, can really glad to see there is a field dedicated to this study. And uh, you can just mention in your future work that you are planning to extend the study to different methods. And I was wondering, uh, let me formulate this correctly, how does the complexity of the problem state as the network is seen? Um, what we have found that the problem that we obtained that, uh, solving this, uh, the, um, obtaining the coefficients, the main problem that has is obtaining the combination, as I said, of uh, the variables that uh, gave up, give us the, each monomial in the polynomial. That is, if you have uh, x2 squared uh, x3, you need to find uh, all the combination that, that we uh, this monomial that can be 
in, in the input variables, it's only x2 dot x2 dot x3. But when you are creating deeper layers, the method that we are uh, uh, using uh, to extend it to deeper layers that uh, creates polynomial regressions at each unit of each layer. So you have to find all the combinations from all the previous. You no longer have only the input variables. You have uh, polynomials that you uh, take to the power of something in the Taylor expansion that creates other polynomials. And you need to find all the possible combinations to obtain each polynomial in the next slide. So that is uh, something that uh, we think that is uh, factorial with the in uh, factorial order with the dimension of the number of input variables. So we are working with uh, two or three hidden layers, but uh, getting deeper than that is not computationally efficient right now, but we hope we solve it some sometime. <laughs> Okay, good luck. I mean, one of the drawbacks of neural networks is that they are the whole. So uh, being able to interpret them is like very important. So congrats again. Thank you. More questions? I have what does not comment or for me. And um, what would be difficult to understand is how I interpret. Uh, the coefficient from the polynomial relation when the when the degree of the of the polynomial is, is high. For instance, I'm, I'm thinking about combination of variables, even contradictory yes. variables. So interpreting this, I don't have an example, but I, I don't know, maybe I have a combination of weight, height, and the city where this person lives, I don't know. So for me, interpreting this coefficient in terms of the variables would be difficult for high degrees or not yes. so high degrees of I yes. don't know. No, yes, that, that's a problem. That's uh, when you have a high polynomial with, uh, we, we are considering all the possible interaction, interactions with all possible variables. So that becomes a problem to interpret it also, but it's a still better than interpreting the neural network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, this. We are presenting the, the, the method to obtain the polynomial regression, but then it should be uh, seen. We should see how to uh, properly implement this in, uh, like I said, in, for example, real data to see how how much of an interpret interpretation we can obtain from this this method. Maybe I'm thinking about adding some constraints to the polynomial or something like this to manage the complexity of, of yes. I don't know. Yes, uh, we are. We thought also about exploring about that and seeing how uh, maybe drop out in about some in some neurons can allow to find polynomials that have not so much interactions, maybe. But that's still an, an open problem. Okay. Thank you very much. And good. Thank you. And this is somehow related with the I I said at the beginning that the interpretation of the coefficients is very domain specific yeah. because, for instance, uh a square, a time square in the context of the, the equation of movement is very interpretable because it's acceleration, but in other contexts, maybe it's not. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay, so let's uh, 